Hi everybody, I'm Stacy with Stacy's Organizing and Decorating for Life or StacyForLife.com. I'm here to help you organize your thoughts and decorate your perspectives. So today's topic is alone or lonely. If we're alone, some of us like our alone time, but if we're feeling lonely, that means we're unhappy about being alone. Also, we're going to look at love versus codependence. So if you like the idea of that being our topics today and you haven't already, please like and subscribe to this video, to my videos, this channel. So, you know, with Valentine's Day coming, whether you're in a partnership or not, there's certain things you can celebrate, you know, and, and there's the upside and the downside to both. So first off, we'll look at what they call sad, and it's sad that they call it sad because it's just single, which there's nothing wrong with being single, awareness, there's nothing wrong with being aware, and day, and each day is a gift. So me helping you, you know, change your perspectives is, is something that I'm here to do too. So that's a good thing. The good thing about that is, is that you don't have to wait at the restaurant for two hours if you're a couple and then be, you know, have your partner getting hangry and then treating people bad at the restaurant because the expectation of food and you're, you're both starving to death. Then when you leave, you can't even be romantic because your bellies are too full because you had to wait and starve to death before you ever got to eat anyway. So there's a good side to all of that. Even if you're in a partnership, you don't have to do all of that. There's certain things you can do to be romantic, and maybe next week's video is going to be on that. But today we're going to get back to the topic of love versus codependency. So love is something that we are, that we can just be and do. Codependency is a learned behavior. I'm going to recite a poem that kind of describes things, you know, in the right perspective, and I'm going to put my tweak on it, and then I'll read it again a second time to kind of let you hear the beauty in it and what it truly stands for, but sometimes people just seem to dismiss it just when it's said out of the beauty part. So, you've all heard this, it's from the Bible, love is patient, love is kind. That means that love is patient, love is not coming from a place of scarcity, meaning you're not rushing into stuff. You know, you've got love in yourself, so you're not going to be accepting and settling for shit that doesn't resonate with your soul. Love is kind. It's not mean. It does not envy. It means it does not envy others. It does not envy others' relationships. And it doesn't envy other people, as in you're afraid that your partner's looking at this other person. It does not boast. This means that it's not a single-sided relationship. It's a partnership and that there's not one person dominating things, but both people working together. It is not proud. This means that it's not a relationship based on how does it look on the outside without people paying attention to what's going on internally. It does not dishonor others. That means it doesn't build one person up and put one person down. It means that everybody's equal. It is not self-seeking. That means that the intentions in this relationship are pure and, you know, with intention and motivation rather than uh, looking for what can you do for me. It is not easily angered. This means you're not walking on eggshells, is what this means. It keeps no record of wrongs. This means we're not playing tit for tat. I did this and you do that, or vice versa. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. This is like having an honest, open relationship. It always protects. This means that you feel safe. It always trusts. This means that you feel secure. It always hopes. When I say it always hopes, that's not like you're hoping that your partner is going to be nice. It means that the hope is filled on both of you coming together and fulfilling those dreams and goals and visions. And then it always perseveres. This means that when shit hits the fan, you're able to sit down together and talk about it and try to find a resolution. So that's what it is, not fight or flight. So I'm going to read it again. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it doesn't dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily anchored, it keeps no record of wrongs, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth, it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. So that kind of tells you if you're in a healthy or unhealthy relationship by the first reading. The second re reading tells you how beautiful love is supposed to be. And I've made a list of things that are codependent and what are love. Codependent is enmeshed. Love is free. Codependent has the fear of abandonment. Love is your secure. 
Codependent can be insulting, and then love is uplifting. Codependent is wanting to rescue and be rescued, and love is self, you know, safe and confident. Codependent, as I said before, it was tit for tat, and in love it's a partnership. Codependent is manipulative, and love you're communicative. You communicate together. Um, and codependent, it's worrisome, and love it's peace filled. And codependent, it's self -valid seeking validity, and in love it's comfortable. You're comfortable. You don't need validity from somebody else. And then in codependent, a lot of times what people do is they want you to fix them. They want you to make the decisions for them. Codependents don't know what they feel, what they want. Sometimes, I don't know, because I've worked on my own codependency 18 years ago. When I came out of my marriage of 10 years, we'd been in a relationship, we'd been in a relationship total for 12. So I went to therapy, and my therapist would ask me, what are you feeling? I would be like, I don't know, because I would give my power away. So when people say, oh, you're giving your power away, this is what they're talking about, is that you're trusting somebody else to tell you how you think, how you feel, and then your soul gets pissed off because your soul knows better. Your soul has these wants, dreams, and desires for you, but when we're codependent, we're not feeling the courage to do so, so we're looking for other people to give us that validity so we can seek the courage that we want, or we want them to uplift us, and they don't, they can't do it, because if we don't uplift and love ourselves, nobody and no amount can ever do that for us. So, this is where we fall into the problems of the codependency versus love. Love is more freeing, and, and as you heard, love is kind. People are, you know, when you go somewhere and you're in a love relationship, you're not worried about who's talking to who in the relationship. You're all excited. You're going, you're going to, you know, one person may be hungry. They may go to the food bar, and they're not worried about who somebody's going to see at the food bar. When you're codependent, you're worried about why are they leaving you there and doing this, and am I lonely, and whatever, where if you're, you know, in a love relationship, you're trusting that you're getting to go to an event and it's great and that you're going to get to have fun. Codependents are worried. They're more worried. There's a lot more stuff going on, these what ifs and all of this. And I had all that going on too. And, you know, my therapist taught me that, you know, the things that she taught me, and I'm going to share with you briefly because I don't know how long this is going to record, is what's my business, God's business, somebody else's business, that it's all not all about me. You know, because in a codependent, they don't really realize how self-centered that they are. They think because they're giving away the farm with their feelings and their, and everything else that, you know, they're not. But it's really a manipulation because if they don't love their self, then these feelings they're giving away are the feelings of, you know, low self-worth and what have you because they're wanting somebody else to feel, make them feel that way, if that makes sense. So what my therapist told me was when I went to her, because we had been, in, you know, been together for 12 years all in total, she told me to take a month off for each year we had been together. And if you haven't been together for, you know, years and years, I would say take a week off for each month to do that healing of yourself. During this time, I read tons of books and thought that because I read those books that once I come out and was able to date that I would have it down. But no, then there comes the practice of it and integration. So when I'm working with people too, I can't tell people whether to stay or whether to go in a relationship because it has to come from the soul. The soul has to tell people if they stay or go because I'm not saying to dis or not like codependents, narcissists, whatever else. Because I think that if you judge any of that, you could come back in the next life and easily be something like that. I'm saying to embrace that within yourself and to embrace it within others. It doesn't mean that you have to choose that for yourself and choose that for others. It means that when we read it, when we define ourselves, we aren't looking for somebody else to define us. That's why in the beginning of the video, I told you I'm not asking you to deny your feelings, but define your feelings. Because if you're in a codependent relationship, you're denying your own feelings and defining somebody else's. And that's why you get pissed off and insult the other person because with all that you're doing for them because you're foreseeing their wants and needs and desires based on you're not wanting to look at your own wants, needs, and desires, if that makes sense. You're putting your fuel into them and not into you. That's why I say when you work on my business, God's business, and somebody else's business that you get to know that. I'm sorry, I thought the video cut off. Also, last piece of advice is in that scarcity part that I started that poem off with is that if you are beginning a new love relationship, that you wait for three months to sleep with each other or what have you, at least. Because 
the thing is, is when we first get with people, all this chemical stuff's going on within us that's feeding into our minds, our bodies, our souls, our hearts, and everything else. We're not even seeing or hearing the other person for who they truly are. We're seeing and hearing them for what we want them to be. Because we all have our dreams, goals, and fantasies. And I mean, that's just a human thing. The codependent will keep on having those dreams, goals, and fantasies. The person who is healthy will be able by this time to start recognizing if this person really is going to resonate with their soul or not and make a commitment. They won't make a commitment to settle. You see what I'm saying? So I hope that all this has been helpful and beneficial to you this, this season, and I hope that you'll you know, have suggestions, comments, or anything else below if you wish, or you know, instant message me. My email is stacyreinick at gmail.com. Uh, yeah, gmail and you can always find me at stacyforlife.com. Stacy's Organizing and Decorating for Life on Facebook. Reinick Stacy on Twitter. Or just Stacy Reinick here on YouTube. So with all of that being said, I hope that you have a great, fantastic finish to your week and weekend. And I look forward to connecting to you next Wednesday. And it will still be the day before Valentine's Day. So... All right. I wish you peace, hope, and love, and many, many blessings from above and below. So, thank you.